lot of material to cover, uh, and I hope that when the night is over, we have brought glory to our, our God. Let's go to him in prayer before we go any further. Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over us this day, and thank you for being allowing us to come to your house to worship and learn more about you and your people. Lord, you put me up here to use me as a vessel for your, your desires to convey to these people what the Muslim people believe and that we're all God's children. Lord, I ask you to put your blessings upon this and then following our business meeting that we will conduct it in a manner that's, that's right for the church. We make those decisions as a body. And be with us this week as we go out into the battlefield, Lord, that you arm us and give us those things so we can tell others about the wonderful plan of salvation. We ask all these in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. They say the human mind is capable of, of retaining about 10% of what it's exposed to. 10%. Think about that next time you have to go to a surgeon. Uh, but really, that changes by repetitive, repetitiveness. So doctors go over and over and over procedures, medicines and stuff so that it is retained more. What you're going to get tonight uh, generally, you're going to get a 10% retention of what, what you're being exposed to. But why am I here is because I got tired of turning the news on and hearing terms by the news anchors of what's going on over in the Middle East that made no sense to me. I never heard the word caliphate, uh, jihadist. Uh, Terms that Shiites and Sunnis and uh, all this stuff just went over my head and I felt dumb watching the news because I know what goes on over there is not happening over here, but now we see the people of that faith starting to infiltrate our society. Not so much Mississippi, but in other areas of the country. And I said, maybe it's time I learned something about what they're bringing here. So if you've got a Bible, I would appreciate it if you would turn to the book of Ephesians to start off with. Ephesians chapter 6. It's a Bible verse you've heard over and over. Been many sermons preached on this. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his, in, in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything to stand. Now, what are they saying when it says put on the full armor of God? You have to be founded in the faith, that's one. To read his word on a daily basis, that's two. And third, to find out what's going on around you. And tonight, I hope that I'm going to be allowed to give you some information that will help you with your armor to give you some information about the nation of Islam and what the Muslim people believe. I am in no way tonight going to defend their religion. There is the one God that we serve every Sunday here and we worship every Sunday. Uh, I refer to him as Yahweh. The 
Muslim people will say they have but one God, and his name is Allah. Now, we're going to go into some of the, we're going to dissect some of their beliefs. We're going to dissect some of their motives. And before the night's over, we'll have a question and answer on stuff that I probably didn't cover. And I know there will be questions I can't answer. But I think you'll leave here with a better knowledge of the religion of Islam. So, where do we start? We have to go back to the beginnings of the region uh, mentioned in the Bible going back all the way to Abraham. Now, the region was hostile. The region was not only environmentally hostile, it was tribes fighting tribes. And if you remember, God told Abraham, get out of here and go, go to a place I'm gonna show you. Then I'm gonna make a great nation from your offspring. If you remember, he and his wife, Sarah, lived out and it was many years later uh, that Abraham didn't think that God was going to fulfill that promise. So Abraham slept with Hagar and had a son, Ishmael. Ishmael was the first born of the Abraham family, if you want to call it that, but traditionally, uh, and that was the first born tradition back then. But then Sarah got pregnant. Sarah had a son. What was his name? Come on, folks. Isaac. So tonight we're going to talk about those two offspring and, and how the religion 